Hello, hello everyone, welcome back. It's uh, my third time in uh, the OpenStack Day Nordic event. It's always a great, uh, great event, great crowd, nice presenters, not me, the others. <laughs> so um, it's always great to be to be here in uh, in Stockholm for for those events. Uh, previously, we had Jonathan before the break detailing the the new strategy for the OpenStack Foundation, and in uh, in this talk, I wanted to tell the story behind that strategic change. Um, I wanted to dive deeper into why we changed, uh, the motivation behind it, the consequences of that change, and, uh, and where we are today implementing this change. Um, so first, why, why did we change? Um, back in 2017, there were a number of discussions we were having that pointed toward a similar uh, need for change in the, the OpenStack strategy. If you, um, if you were there from, uh, from the beginning, the early days, uh, OpenStack started with a very strong project focus. Um, it, it was really solely focused on the production of OpenStack software, to the point where the community was basically defined by what we produced. Um, the, the OpenStack community was really tied to to OpenStack software. Um, that was reinforced in 2015 when we uh, did the project structure reform, which uh, was dubbed the Big Tent, which basically said that anything that is produced by the OpenStack community is by definition a part of OpenStack. Um, so we, we had that really strong tie between the software and the community producing it. Um, this was really uh, great in the early days, especially to, uh, to build this initial community around the, around the software, to grow um, to the size that it is today and to capture all the excitement that was thrown at OpenStack in, in the early days. But uh, by 2017, it was pretty clear that we are hitting the limits of that view. Uh, if you were uh, very project-centric like we were, it's uh, very isolationist. It's really difficult to engage with other communities. Uh, I think Jonathan made the point that uh, it's, it's operating as a silo. If everything that you produce is focused on your software, uh, it doesn't, there is nothing that exists outside of it. So we, we had that. Uh, that made it very difficult to engage with adjacent communities, it made it difficult to adopt pieces of technology or be complementary to pieces of technology that were produced by adjacent communities. But the main issue was really that it uh, created a lot of confusion as to what OpenStack was, because it turns out that um, whatever your community produces is not a great product definition. Um, so there were lots of things that were produced by the OpenStack community that did, that did not really fit in the picture, and that created a lot of confusion as to what what actually is OpenStack. Um, this was actually identified um, as a major issue during the leadership workshop that we had in March of 2017 with the board of directors, the technical committee, the user committee, uh, and, and the foundation staff, we all got together to discuss uh, strategic issues that we needed to solve in, in OpenStack. And one of them was uh, to better communicate uh, about what OpenStack actually is. And as a, as a result of that, that's where we built this map that Jonathan uh, presented earlier. Um, this, the idea behind the map is to show that among those uh, uh, lots of deliverables that the OpenStack community produces, there is a core product, there is uh, a number of, of tools that can be used to deploy it, there are a number of extra uh, operational tuning that you can deploy uh, to help operating it. Uh, there are like client tools, but those are separate from the main, uh, the, the central box that we are seeing here. And it really helped us think about what fits in that picture and what does not fit in that picture. So it started with, uh, we had that early discussion about product definition that we did not really have before. Um, another discussion that we had around the same time was around our continuous integration system. Um, we touched on that earlier. Uh, one thing that everyone agrees that we did really great in OpenStack is integrating continuous integration from day zero in the project. Uh, and as we, as OpenStack grew, the system evolved with it 
to the to the size it is today and enabling the pace of development that we have today. Um, the sad part was that the tooling that we built to support that was seen as OpenStack specific. It was seen as something that only the OpenStack community could use. So uh, that was there. There was no one else using it because it was seen as uh, as tied to the OpenStack project, which was kind of sad. Um, at the same time, we also had uh, a demand for more. We had a number of open source nascent communities or, uh, or organizations willing to openly collaborate come to the OpenStack Foundation because they liked the way we supported OpenStack. They liked the values that we were, uh, we were driving with this. And uh, the, we, since everything we did was OpenStack, there was just two answers to, that, uh, to those questions. It was either you could make it a part of OpenStack, which would further dilute what we meant by OpenStack, or we would just say no. And we increasingly said no over the past years, which was kind of sad because we could not support those uh, very interesting nascent open source collaborations around uh, other open infrastructure pieces. Um, another thing that happened around 2017 is the emergence of edge computing. Uh, Jordan touched on it uh, earlier. The, the same organizations that were helping us build this uh, cloud infrastructure framework that is OpenStack were interested in exploring other ways to, provo to provide infrastructure resources uh, to their users, uh, ways that are more distributed, uh, distributing compute power closer to where it's actually consumed, enabling low latency, uh, high performance applications like augmented reality at the edge. And uh, that's something that happened uh, during, during that period as well. OpenStack components can be used in edge scenarios, but they are not enough. There is uh, extra things that need to be done outside of OpenStack to enable that specific use case. Um, the last discussion that we are having in, in 2017 that really, for me, uh, signaled this need for a change was coming to those OpenStack days, um, discussing with your users, uh, and, and seeing how you were uh, mixing and matching open infrastructure technologies and how to, to solve your infrastructure needs and how difficult that was, how you had to reinvent this integration from scratch every time, how you were suffering from a uh, lack of integration between the pieces, lack of end-to-end -end testing, lack of, uh, of collaboration between those, those, um, those entities. And that's really what, for me, signaled the we had to change something in, in the way we were driving OpenStack. It really pointed to me to the, the fact that integration is re was really the last mile, the, the thing that blocked further open infrastructure adoption in, in, uh, in, the, in the world. So that's, that was the, really at that point, we knew we had to change something. And the, the, at that point, we didn't want to, um, to completely abandon why we started this earlier. So we, we took that step back and looked at our original motivation. Why did we start this OpenStack thing uh, eight years ago? The, the, main, um, the main principle that we built uh, OpenStack on is open collaboration. It's this belief that in order to build very successful technology today, open source is not enough. You need to openly collaborate. Uh, you need to, and by openly collaborate, I mean um, open source projects that anyone can participate in, uh, any organization, any individual, as an equal on, an, on a level playing field. It doesn't have, it's not like a main sponsor controlling the project that reaps most of the benefits of the contribution there. Um, the, this, this open collaboration is one key aspect of what we st why we started OpenStack. The other key aspect is the belief in open infrastructure. Uh, it's this belief that all of the world's infrastructure needs should not be provided by three uh, uh, big providers, uh, US-based providers. Um, and that we needed an open source solution to enable everyone to have access to that technology, that the, the landscape was much more complex than those three big actors would let you believe. And um, so that's, that's the other, the other uh, side of, of the coin, openly collaborating to build open infrastructure. Um, we also wanted to build, when we started the foundation, we also wanted to build a foundation that would uh, balance 
and recognize the importance of both upstream and downstream work. Um, there are some foundations that are really good at upstream work, like enabling development communities, creating a healthy uh, development process. Uh, some foundations are really good at downstream work, like events, uh, marketing, engaging with users. Um, we wanted to build something that would recognize the importance of both of those sides, recognizing that one cannot be truly successful without the other. Uh, and that's what, what drove our initial motivation as well. And finally, we, we believed in the power of lasting relationships. Uh, technology is ultimately social, uh, and it's a, like a group of people weathering the same challenges together. And so while we embarked in this ambitious mission to uh, openly collaborate, to build up an infrastructure to resist very large proprietary and very powerful uh, uh, organizations, uh, it's, we had to remember not to take it too seriously, build lasting relationships, have fun, and, and, uh, and, and really um, uh, not think too much about it. So um, looking back at our original motivation, um, the other thing we needed to do at that point was looking back at what we built over the past seven years and what we should definitely reuse, whatever we do next. Um, we built uh, a, co a coalition of organizations aligned around this drive to openly collaborate to build up an infrastructure. Uh, so it could be uh, competitors to the big three trying to stand up alternate public cloud providers. Uh, could be um, public research organizations like CERN or uh, the Square Kilometer Array uh, interested in uh, running their mind-boggling compute needs in something else than a, public, a very costly public cloud. Um, could be organizations in the retail or entertainment industry not really um, big fans of the idea of financing their own extinction by uh, funding Amazon Web Services extremely large uh, profit margins. Uh, it could be organizations and governments in, in other parts of the world, like Europe or China, uh, that had uh, data sovereignty or data privacy issues that were, could not really use um, US-based providers. All those organizations joined this coalition around openly collaborating to build open infrastructure as a solution. We built a network of events. Uh, we're here at OpenStack Day. We do global OpenStack summits, next one in, in Berlin in a month. Um, we do these OpenStack regional days. We also have meet, very local meetups that collectively reaches out to 20,000 people around the world every year. So whatever we do, we should make sure to reuse this, uh, this network of events uh, because it's a very strong um, uh, thing we built here. Um, another thing we successfully built is a user community, really engaged and, and willing to share their experiences. Um, whatever we should, whatever we change, we should definitely leverage that uh, great user community and their input. And um, finally, the project infrastructure is uh, something we built successfully built over the past seven years. It's an openly um, operated set of open source services that sustain OpenStack development. And whatever we do, we should make sure to reuse that. So after, uh, after looking back at our original motivation and taking stock of everything we built over the past seven years, we came up with this new strategy that, uh, that, open, that uh, Jonathan mentioned earlier. Um, it's basically a discussion shift from being project oriented uh, which was around creating a solution, building software, building OpenStack, to uh, being much more goal-oriented, um, solving a problem space, uh, integrating various solutions to solve that problem space, building and supporting open infrastructure rather than building just OpenStack. And once you look at it from that prism, it's, it's, it's really enabling a lot more collaboration and, and um, and integration with an I4 users to have a, a, a more uh, easily operated solution. Um, when we think, when we say open infrastructure, it's pretty vague. Um, so one thing we did is also to refine what we actually meant by open infrastructure by designating specific strategic focus areas that uh, that we wanted to specifically address. So there is data center cloud, which is the traditional sp problem space that uh, OpenStack is solving. 
Um, there is, we wanted to do edge computing. We wanted to explore uh, uh, various ways to reuse open stack components in, in the edge space. Uh, if you move more and more compute power uh, closer to where those resources are consumed, obviously we will have plenty of micro deployments and interoperability and standards is really key. And we, we truly think that open source has a great role to play there. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's still a nascent focus areas, but it's very promising. Uh, another one we wanted to support is container infrastructure. If you start integrating containers in open infrastructure solutions, you kind of have to uh, look at it end-to-end -end from bare metal to services being accessible to users with a strong eye towards security. And we felt like if you look at it from a, a complete stack perspective, there were some gaps that needed to be addressed for it to be truly successful. And finally, uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery, going from code being written by the developer to a service being deployed for a user. Uh, again, a lot of uh, work there, and, and the experience we had with developing OpenStack could be applied to other organizations. Uh, we, we saw the presentation earlier where, where speed and agility of development is really key for all of those companies, and, and helping in that area was also pretty cool. Um, so once we had those focus areas, we applied this strategy, and I won't get into uh, more detail because Jonathan already covered this. Um, one, one important thing is that uh, supporting the missing pieces of technology is just one piece of that puzzle, even if that's something we talk a lot about. Um, so projects, they're really just one, one step, one piece in that puzzle. They're the missing pieces of technology what we need to support the creation of. Um, and um, that's why we, we go beyond OpenStack to support other pieces of technology that might be necessary to support those focus areas. So ideally, the projects that the OpenStack Foundation supports end up solving, helping with multiple of those focus areas. You will notice that OpenStack, for example, is used in every of those focus areas, CI, CD, Edge, computer, um, container infrastructure, and, and data center cloud. Um, those would be produced by separate communities. Um, each project has its own um, uh, specialty language uh, community around it. And so that's why we don't have like a single technical leadership on top of those projects. We want uh, the technical governance to be aligned with the contributors to the project. And that's why all of those uh, projects will have a specific technical leadership groups. And finally, we go through two stages with those projects. We start by piloting them, bootstrapping an open collaboration, trying to get people to collaborate around the same, the same project. And once uh, they're, uh, they've reached that, that uh, open collaboration or, uh, in the project, the, the board of directors can uh, confirm that it is long-term investment for the OpenStack Foundation to further support that project. We have four pilot projects today. Uh, Kata Containers, which is secure container runtime. We have uh, Zool, which is a scalable continuous integration engine with uh, an eye on cross-project dependencies. It was actually, like uh, Jonathan mentioned earlier, uh, a key part of the OpenStack project infrastructure, but was invisible within it. Uh, and so we basically extracted it, gave it its own brand and identity so that it can be reused in, in other, uh, in other organizations, and we've seen tremendous interest in organizations that we did not naturally touch with OpenStack pure needs, so that's very interesting. Uh, Airship, which is uh, a framework for managing the life cycle of open infrastructure deployments. That's very promising in, and very complementary with what we, what we have uh, in other projects. And finally, Starling X, which is an IoT edge a cloud platform for uh, low, lit low, low latency and high performance applications. Um, so consequences. Um, there's once we announced this strategy, there were lots of fears that uh, that meant we were moving away from from uh, supporting OpenStack, and there was a lot of concerns about what that actually changed for the foundation, for OpenStack, for uh, the OpenStack infrastructure team. And I wanted to briefly um, briefly cover that. The, um, 
so for the foundation, obviously that means we'll support more than just OpenStack, which creates interesting branding and, and bylaws changes. But otherwise, it's not very different from what we we're, we're already doing by reaching out to other uh, um, adjacent communities and try to make sure you know, OpenStack all integrated well with them. For OpenStack, the reality is it doesn't change that much. Um, OpenStack is still the very central piece of our cloud infrastructure strategy and has pieces that are reused in those various focus areas. Uh, if anything, it gives us, us OpenStack an opportunity to uh, further refine and, 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 and refocus our efforts in the key central part of OpenStack rather than uh, have to dilute the scope of OpenStack because there were interesting open source projects that wanted to be part of it. Um, we should also see more and more individually reusable components as those components are uh, reused in other use cases. So we are seeing, for example, some components of OpenStack being reused in Airship for, uh, for uh, facilitating authentication or, or bare metal deployment. And for the, for the, the project infrastructure, the, obviously will serve more than just OpenStack. Uh, it's already the case. There are lots of projects that are not OpenStack that are supported by the OpenStack project infrastructure, uh, but uh, now will be more visible that it's an, a project infrastructure that can serve multiple projects to a point where we are giving it its own uh, domain name separated from, from the OpenStack.org domain. So that platform will be under opendev.net. We'll have a separate governance that will be separate from the OpenStack project as well with input from the main project that are using it. And we hope that it will trigger new resources to be, uh, to be sent to the, uh, project, the OpenStack project infrastructure uh, because we always need more, uh, more cloud resources to, um, to run them. Um, finally, last thing I wanted to touch on is limits. Um, there are also this fear that as we're accepting new projects, we're diluting our values um, that, for example, we're obvi obviously uh, accepting new programming languages. We're um, also accepting new, new development tooling on those projects, um, like Kata Containers, for example, is developed on GitHub, while uh, the OpenStack project has a pretty strong stance on using open source tools to, uh, to develop open source software. Um, so where Basically, where are the limits? Where are the red lines that we, we consider not on scope for OpenStack? Well, the red lines are the, the four opens, uh, which basically define the way we do open source at the OpenStack Foundation. Um, that's open source. We don't do open core. Everything that's, hap that's happening in the development is licensed under an open source license. We do open development, uh, which means everything in development is transparent and you can see it happening and you can participate in it um, using open tools. Um, open design, which means that the design is not done behind closed doors by a special group of developers. It's actually a public process that in, uh, integrates the feedback from the users into development in, in public meetings that we're running around our OpenStack summits. Um, and finally, open community, which is this promise that anyone can um, rise to leadership positions within the projects, that contribution is our currency. Like if you contribute to the project, you can, you can you, there is no appointed seats. There is no uh, like, uh, 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 technical committee seats that are reserved for uh, founding members or whatever. Like anyone who contributes can be elected to leadership positions and, 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 um, and participate to the project. The other, um, the other red line that we want to um, clearly put on here is that we're not really interested in, in supporting dozens of projects. Uh, we, we think that the it's important that projects spawn uh, an open collaboration. Uh, it, they need to help with the open infrastructure and our strategic focus areas. So um, that means we, we want to limit the number of projects we support to those that are actually the missing pieces of technologies that we need to enable those, uh, those strategic focus areas. And we also want them to work well with our other projects. Um, so we want uh, to paint a, a nice complementarity story between those various projects uh, so that they work well together. And, and so that should limit the number of projects that we end up supporting. So I'm uh, about um, out of time now. Um, that's the, the story of it behind the change we've been driving over the past year. Uh, 
it's the ambitious journey we're embarking on. Um, I hope you like it, and uh, I hope that uh, you will join it. Uh, we are just getting started. So thank you.